So if you watched my last video, you probably know that I've been working on another project. Unfortunately, this does mean that I'll be spending less time on the darkening, but I am testing some other things out. So since I have like a general understanding of multiplayer and all that development, I kind of wanted to see what I could do. So this game is heavily inspired by Screensheet and those other minigame type games. So right now you might be thinking, Oh, but you're just another Danny clone making another crab game. And you know what I gotta say to that? You are so right. Isn't every game just a clone of any other game? I mean, if you really think about it, Apex Legends is just Fortnite, but in the Titanfall universe. Titanfall might as well just be a clone of the Call of Duty universe. And any Call of Duty game that came out, and ever, is just a clone of the previous one. The only difference in any of those is that there are variations. The thing that makes Titanfall different than Call of Duty is that it has giant mech suits. The only thing that varies the darkening from Binding of Isaac is that it's worse. And it's mobile. Although I gotta say, the idea that I have now, I haven't seen the idea in any other game. I may be wrong, and if there is a game that follows this same idea, let me know. But the premise is, you join a lobby of 2-8 to eight players, and like a traditional deathmatch, you have to try to eliminate the other players. Although there is a twist. On the top of the screen there is a timer saying, you have 10 seconds to get to a certain zone on the map. These zones are invisible, and you only know if you are in a zone by the color of your vignette. This eliminates the issue of camping, and forces you to engage in becoming exposed to other players. If you are not in a zone, then you get eliminated. I'm thinking of actually having the whole game be based around these zones. So one might be a capture the flag, and the other one might be control points, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So the first thing I did was I created an empty object and added a character controller to it. I then yoinked a movement script from a previous project, and then I added B. And so now it's running around and doing whatever. The next plan of action was to create the zones. So basically I took the length of the map, along with the width, and I judged how many zones I wanted and the size of the zone. I created a prefab for all the zones, a prefab is just an object that can be instantiated, and it carries all of its functions. So I figured I wanted it to be a 5x5 five five area on this map. The map is 75 units by 75 units, which means each zone should be about 15 units by 15 units. In that script I chose a random color to be generated, and then I created two for loops, one inside the other, and it generated one zone for each X area, and then it moved up one for a Y zone. Or I guess the Z zone since we're in the third dimension. So Z is zero and then X goes zero and then it instantiates one that has X is one and then X is two, three, four and then it moves on and now Z is one and then X becomes zero, one, two, three and it goes on until it has all 25. Now that sounds confusing because I made it sound confusing, but it's really not that difficult. I then made it choose a random zone to spawn in, and that was basically the gameplay, or the base start of it. And while it was very unlikely that there was a chance that you wouldn't get any zones, like a specific green one, I wanted to make sure that it at least always had three green zones, the yellow zones and red zones, and blue so you wouldn't get tasked to go to a blue zone and there isn't one at all. So now the main gameplay works. If you're not in the correct zone, then it runs a script to see if you're in a zone that you're supposed to be in, and if you're not, you explode. I then implemented sprinting and crouching and sliding. That was a whole mess and a half to get working, but I did get it. I feel like it would have been better off if I would have taken a movement script from just an external source rather than writing it myself, but it's fine. I love learning, I love the experience of trying new things to see if it would work. Okay, it looks like we're just going in one direction. You don't know you're beautiful. After that, I worked on the shooting, I added a recoil effect to the gun, or I guess an animation, did a particle effect for the muzzle flash, and it looks okay. It definitely always could be better. 
I also added a pretty sick reload animation. Once all that was all ready, I was kind of thinking, yeah, this map needs to be updated. So I used Pro Builder and I fixed the map and I worked on it a little bit more and I forgot to save it and Unity crashed. I lost all my map layout and design. I lost it completely all because I tried doing a Boolean subtraction using Pro Builder. So there goes about 30 minutes of just messing around and making the map. So I spent another 30 minutes working on the map and making sure it's good. And guess what I tried doing? I tried doing the Boolean tool with subtraction again. You would think I would learn from my mistakes, but I didn't save it and I tried doing it and the game crashed again. There goes another 30 minutes of work just gone because I did not save it. I nearly just quit, but I was like, I gotta finish this. I gotta work on it because it's cool. <laughs> That's the only reason why I wanted to do it. So I continued working on it. And the map looks alright, but it wasn't as cool as it was when I first made it. Luckily this isn't going out for publishing, so I can make the map however I want until I need to make a well-designed level. After that was done, I figured I needed a menu. So luckily I've already done this before in my previous game, so I just plagiarized myself and I pasted everything into here. Now I have a menu that's partially broken, but a lobby that works and gets you into games. So not surprisingly, after banging my head against my table and my cup, due to multiplayer reasons, I think I got it working, at least so far. The only bugs that exist are the bugs that I don't know about. Then I added crosshairs and a hit marker, and the hit marker was a pain in the butt, and I don't know why. But it works now, and that's all that matters. Now I've used Blender quite a bit, but I haven't the first idea on how to create a human player. So I followed the tutorial and that didn't really help too much and I came up with this. Pretty goofy. Definitely going to be updated eventually. But I just gave it some bones using the bone rigging thing in Blender and I also added some weights to it for each bone. And now he looks even goofier. One thing I wish I would have known a while ago was how to add UV texture maps to an object in Blender. In that tutorial that I watched, I totally learned how to do it, and I was able to make basically any texture I want now. And after understanding how it works, it's surprisingly simple. I truly thought it would be way more difficult than it actually was. So I probably won't touch Blender's shader graph or whatever in quite some time. Unity doesn't like Blender shaders for whatever reason. I also had a 1911 model from a long time ago where I was just testing out modeling in Blender, and so I threw that in as well. Although I had to remake the slide because it was pretty bad. It still looks bad, it just looks not as bad. So I begun by throwing in my character into Unity, adding a, a movement script, and a character controller. But after throwing my character models in, I decided I need to make some animations too. So I created a simple walk animation, or I guess run in this case, and it looks horrible. I then followed it up by making a jump animation. But getting the states to work for them to like, you know, go back to the idle and the walk animation, that just, it just wasn't working. So for a while, I was floating like this. I just love imagining how people would look if this is actually how people walked around. I spent a little too long on making that and now my legs hurt. And I can barely walk upstairs, let alone crouch down. But now I got it working and everything's great. But there are so many things that need to be fixed. So yeah, I fixed that animation and added a few more. This has got to be the most cursed thing I've probably created. Definitely not the most cursed thing on the internet, but of my creations, yes. I then also tried adding inverse kinematics, which if you've ever messed with inverse kinematics, you think it's super cool, but no one ever actually knows how to do it. So then you just decided to settle with what you have, which is awful, 
and you think it's okay until you need to worry about it more later. But here's the clip of the sliding animations and walking backward animations. It doesn't look too bad and honestly I'm kind of proud of the results. Oh I know, this clip could definitely be a meme somewhere. But anyway, that will about wrap up my progress on this project here. If you liked my video, I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. I really would like to get my videos out into the algorithm so more people can see them. And the more people that see them, the more videos I want to make. If you really like this video, I consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell. That will help me out so much, you'll have no idea. I try to post every Thursday, so always be on the lookout for that. Consider following my Patreon, you'll get to access these videos a few days before they go live, along with early beta testing of my games. With that being said, I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.